Oh, hi babes. We've talked about viruses before on my channel and today I wanna to talk about the big one, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. And I am gonna be real with y'all, the story of HIV is uh, whack as f Oh man, where do we begin? Let's start with the small stuff. Viruses are tiny little agents that get into your cells and use them to create more of itself. Left alone, a virus can just take over. That is actually its entire function and purpose. Thanks, nature! HIV first infects the body through one of these sexual fluids. You can also get it through sharing needles, births, blood transfusions. Once it's in, HIV takes over the immune system cells, known as the CD4 cells, and forces them to make more HIV. And if HIV is left to its own devices for a while, it can eventually take over, killing off these immune cells, leaving you with only, you know, 20% of what you used to have. At that stage, HIV becomes AIDS. For someone living with AIDS, the germs and bacteria that's floating around the world that a healthy body can easily fight off become deadly. HIV is actually relatively new. Scientists have used mutations in HIV's genetic code to trace it all the way back to the beginning. And that was in the 1920s in the city of Kinshasa, which is the capital of the Democratic Republic of Congo. At the time, hunters were killing and eating chimps and exposure to the chimps blood, either by eating it or through an open wound is how simian immunodeficiency virus, SIV, was first transmitted to humans. From there, scientists believe that HIV was able to spread through a perfect storm. You got rapid population growth, a booming sex trade, busy railways and waterways. By 1937, HIV had spread a city over to Brazzaville, then across the sea to Haiti in the 1960s, then up to the United States in the 1970s. By 1981, we start seeing medical reports circulating of a mysterious illness. Gradually, and then suddenly, hundreds of people are getting opportunistic infections and dying. The first victims were mostly gay men and drug addicts. The medical community at the time, they did not have the resources to figure out what was going on, but they did their best to respond. The US government, on the other hand, which is responsible for facilitating that sort of thing, completely ignored what was going on. It would be six entire years and 20,000 deaths before President Reagan ever said anything to the public about AIDS. And you really gotta think about that, right? Because remember Ebola? Two people died and look how he responded. In contrast, Reagan actually claimed that gay men had it coming. He said, maybe the Lord brought down this plague because illicit sex is against the 10 commandments. So during the AIDS epidemic, we see moral panic just start to spread really quickly. Politically, the epidemic was used to justify a wave of progressive policies, including the ones that brought me to YouTube abstinence-only education programs. LGBT activists and allies then organized to fight back with ACT UP. They shut down the FDA for a day. 42,000 dead remain, where is the FDA? They protested on Wall Street against the criminally high price of drugs. They protested outside of churches that were blocking public sex education. They handed out safer sex packets to high school students. They broke into CBS and interrupted the news. Good evening. My day, not Arab. We're gonna take a break for a commercial. My day, not Arab. And really, I mean, what else could they do but demand to be heard and hope that someone with the power to help actually listens? Unlike people, HIV does not discriminate. So how do you stay safe? Here is your prevention checklist. Number one, condoms, of course, every time. Two, gotta know your status. Get tested regularly. The earlier that you catch HIV, the less damage that it can do to you. Three, prep. It's a new pill. This is a daily pill that high-risk folks can take every day to prevent HIV. And four, PEP. This is an emergency prevention pill that you can take up to three days after potential exposure to HIV. And the big question, of course, is will there be a cure? And the answer is yes positive thinking. Eventually, one person on planet Earth has actually been completely cured. He was cured after receiving a stem cell transplant 
from someone who's actually immune to HIV. About 1% of the population has a gene mutation called Delta 32, and it basically makes it impossible for the HIV to get into those CD4 cells. Discovering Delta 32 led to the development of a new drug and more possibilities for a cure. People with HIV today can live long, normal, healthy, vibrant lives without it ever becoming AIDS. Treatments are so effective that they can make HIV virtually undetectable. Here's the bad news. Not everybody is benefiting equally. Why could that be? Access. We know how to end AIDS. We just have to be willing to do it. Equal access to healthcare. Funding for research. Combating stigma. Comprehensive sex ed. Access to condoms. Needle exchange programs. Access to testing. Planned Parenthood. All of these things will fight. AIDS. And yet, hardly any of these things are national policy. As for us, we'll be alright. The best way to fight fear is with information. So spread the word, protect yourself, and we gotta keep fighting to end AIDS. Like, lives depend on it. Because they do. It's not over yet. Stay safe, y'all. Lots of love. I'll see you next time. Mwah.